to know. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm here to tell you that we can't blame everything on Hurricane Dory. Okay? <laughs> That's my message. We can't blame everything on the hurricane. And I'm going to quote Archbishop Pindle without his permission. He said that the hurricane is the ultimate building inspector. All right? The hurricane is the ultimate building inspector. We have I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and there is so much untapped potential. But when I say that to people, they think I'm crazy. We also have a lot of room for growth. And um, you're going to hear me talk a lot about money during my presentation, because that's what people respond to. All right? We, we respond to an opportunity to make money or fear of losing money. All right? So we're going to talk about optimizing this multi-million dollar industry. Most of us are aware that construction is multi-million dollar, are we? Okay. We're going to talk about health and safety because those should be the buzzwords. Codes and regulations. I put in caps, enforcement, sharpening our tools. We want to train. We want to make sure that persons are trained and, and licensed. And we want to talk about attracting the best minds. So let's talk about the value of the industry. Um, these numbers came from the Annual Building Construction Statistics Report 2017. It's produced by the Department of Statistics. And they get their information from the Buildings Control Division. OK? And so what these numbers tell you, and you kind of have, I put Mahamar in brackets there, 2017, because you see that kind of throws everything off. But it gives you an idea of how much money is spent. So this is the, when, when a project completes, they put in the value of how much is spent in that particular year. So for 2016, we had $157 million worth of completions. Now I want to tell you that these numbers are conservative because not every um, construction requires a permit. And usually the, oh, you didn't know that? You don't always require a permit. If I renovate an existing building, I haven't changed the square footage, I have not changed the use of the building, I don't need a permit. You didn't know that? I have not changed the use of the building. I have not increased the square footage of the building. I'm not, I'm telling you. I am speaking from the Bahamas Building Code. Bahamas Building Code. Okay? No, 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 I don't mind. I don't mind at all. You may interrupt me. I don't mind. That's the Bahamas Building Code. Okay? So you're not increasing the square footage and you're not changing the type of, of occupancy. Okay? And so, again, you know, we talk about money. We have to talk about what, what is the potential, right? So, but let's start about, you know, the number of persons. So we see we have around 20,000 persons employed in the construction sector, so it's significant. We're looking at salaries, you know, and I mention these things because we need our young people to get interested in the sector. We need to study the impact of the sector more closely. I find that we don't keep good enough um, statistics. It wasn't that easy to find the information I was looking for. And, um, you know, as a construction professional, I always, um, you know, when you hear the politicians talk, and they talk about 
this project, um, you know, there's a certain amount of jobs. They're usually talking about certain types of jobs. They're never really talking about the jobs, the construction professionals. And that's an area that's on top. Many times I'm in, a, in meetings, and there are a dozen people in the room, and it's me and another Bahamian professional, and everyone else flew in. Many times. Okay? That's my norm. And it doesn't have to be that way. So just by way of an average calculation on $200 million worth of construction, you're talking about a fee potential of $20 million in fees that could be earned by private industry architects. And, and this, these numbers are conservative, I can tell you. The bulk of the fees... <laughs> uh, the bulk of the fees, okay, are uh, earned by companies outside of the Bahamas. Okay, so that you don't have to be working on 20 projects. You only need one project. And those fees are exchanged in banks overseas. No what, like the Bahamians say. No NIB, no business license. It's a huge hole in the industry because we're not also mandating a certain level of participation of the level of the construction professional. Okay? So we just say 300 jobs, 600 jobs, but we need to ask what type of jobs. All right? And what I've observed when I first came in the industry, the electricians, the skilled workers, what Bahamians, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, find a Bahamian now. It's not so easy. Those skilled jobs are not being done by Bahamians. And, you know, I put this question, lack of certified practitioners locally, because I'm not sure that's what we say. That's the excuse we use, but I don't know if it's really true. Oh, can you see that? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I was so proud of my slide because I was just showing you, this was Grand Bahama, the salaries, um, they're higher in um, New Providence, uh, but you know, anyway, <laughs> I'll just go on. I was at C.I. Gibson the other day and I was explaining to them, you know, I asked them, well, you know, how much would you make as a cashier per hour? And they were like $5 an hour. I said, well, the plumbers make $70 an hour, so think about that. So one of the things we, we need to talk about more is occupational health and safety. So we have our Health and Safety Act of 2002. It, need reg it needs regulations to be applied to it and it needs better enforcement. And many times when I, because I am in the, you know, I work on larger projects primarily, all right? And when we work with the foreign consultants, they ask us what OSHA standards, uh, and I have to tell them, none, <laughs> it hurts me. But look at this picture, I took this while I was walking. You see this gentleman? Does he, does he look honest to you? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, I, I, I knew the company that he worked for, so I sent that picture to them. But we have to do better, you know, and so, the, it's gotten better from when I first joined the field, but from job to job, it's different. We're not consistent when it comes to safety, health and safety. All right? And this one part of my presentation might get me in trouble. But this Local Government Act needs to be adjusted. It says functions of district councils. 14B, shall have an exercise in relation to the district, the powers, the powers of the building's control officer. Do you see any reference to qualifications there? If you're in New Providence, what does it take to become the building's control officer? You need to be a licensed engineer or architect with 
experience. So what if I changed that and said, the surgeon, would we sit down and accept that? But we're accepting that. So we're saying, we don't know if you could read plans. We don't know if you are qualified to conduct inspections, but you have the powers of the building's control officer. That needs to change. We cannot blame everything on the hurricane. Codes and regulations. Now there's been a lot of talk about building codes and all of that and the building code need to be updated and, and it does. We need to have a regular cycle. The building code as it is, is not so bad because we have Appendix A of the building code that references other international codes that are regularly updated. So I argue, along with some of my colleagues, that one of the best ways to update is to adopt. So, and, and what we currently do in the Bahamas, which boggles the mind of every foreign consultant I work with, is we automatically adopt a code, even though we haven't read it. Okay? So we say, whatever's the latest code, that's what we're going to use. And so what we need to do is to have an adoption cycle as well. Give us a chance to read the latest National Fire Protection Association codes and decide when we're going to adopt. And I'm glad that you mentioned that Freeport has a different rule because we need, I think, common standards for building throughout the entire country. We should be able to agree everywhere. Wherever you are in the Bahamas, this is what we're doing. All right? So I'd like to see us move to a common, common standard. Now, enforcement is an issue. It's even an issue in New Providence. There's simply not enough inspectors. There's precedent in other countries where you have what's called special inspectors. And so what you're going to be looking for is people who perhaps already have training in the construction industry, architects, engineers, and you train them to be inspectors. And I think that um, there should be mandatory annual training, you know, for license renewal. You know, you don't just, it's kind of like, let me digress. They make me come to the driver's license section, but they never check to see if I still know how to drive. You know? If you just want the 15 or $20, collect it, you know? Um, so we need to make sure that there is constant training, and we should require local government officials to engage suitably qualified inspectors for plan review. All right? Uh, what we also need to do, I know the Ministry of the Buildings Control Department was working on this, which is the electronic submission of um, plans way past you. All right? And so you can't say, you can't find that roll of drawings that I brought that was about as big as this podium. All right, it's electronically submitted, and therefore, a special inspector inspecting a property in Pocat Island, inspect reviewing the drawings, can do that from wherever they happen to be. So, boards, governing boards, we need to take it seriously. The, you have an engineer's board. I'm one of those who fought for the engineer's act. No board reappointed. No board appointed for contractors. You know, they, the boards are important because they're responsible for policing the industry. And there are a lot of bad actors out there. I am licensed in Florida, and I saw some Florida engineers practicing in the Bahamas doing some funny stuff. I reported them to Florida, and Florida told me, it's your job 
to police them because they are not violating anything um, in, in Florida. I, I did report them, but nothing happened. All right? And we have a lot of trades that are not licensed. There's no licensing for environmentalists, for quantity surveyors, air conditioning mechanics, and the list goes on. Nothing. Nothing. All right? And we need to update the requirement for electricians. Okay? The industry has moved past single phase and three phase. And for professionals like me to keep my license in Florida, I have to do professional development hours, but not for the Bahamas. Okay? And so we have to make sure that we keep our tools sharp. And so the reason I enjoy speaking to those high school students is that we need to raise the profile of the profession. It's not fun to be the only Bahamian in the room and it doesn't make any sense. Many times, like I said, the room is full of people who just flew in at $2,000 a day, $3,000 a day. I'm not making this up, okay? <laughs> a day, not a week, a day. And so we need to realize that there's a lot of potential in the construction industry. We need to own our industry. We need to care. And we need to do our part. You cannot build to, you know, prevent everything. But there are a lot of low-hanging fruit. There are a lot of things that we could be doing right now to limit the impact of hurricanes and other natural disasters. And so I... Thank you. Okay.